Hi guys, this is Angela from the London App Brewery. Welcome to episode three in our series of how to make apps with no programming experience. In this episode, we're going to introduce you to Xcode Playgrounds. We're going to be writing some code and we're going to show you how Swift works by making a love calculator. So let's get started. Okay, so let's open up Xcode and I want you to code along with me. Uh, this is the fastest way to learn how to program because I'll explain to you what we're doing as we're typing it out. So instead of creating a new Xcode project like we did last time, this time we're going to click on Get Started with a Playground. So next Xcode will ask you for a name. So let's call our Playground Love Calculator that describes what it does. And I'm going to save it on my desktop, but you can choose where is best for you. So now Xcode presents us with the playground and let's go through it and see what each part does. So when you look at the top here, you've got a line of green text and the way that um, the green text works is that when you have two forward slashes, you turn the text green and in turn you take the text out of the code. So whatever you write behind the two forward slashes is not interpreted by the compiler and it's not used to make your program. So here you can write comments. So they can be comments for yourself, such as this is a love calculator program, or they can be comments to say what each part of your code is doing. Next, it says import UI kit. So at this stage, it's importing a library which has a number of features, number of functions that will help us with uh, writing our code. So finally, we're going to select the last line where it says hello playground, and we're just going to delete it. In this place, we're going to write let my name equal Angela. And you know that I've put Angela in between two quotation marks or speech marks. Whenever you put words or letters inside speech marks, you're trying to tell the computer that I'm making a string. So what is a string? A string is a word like Angela or Ben or Tom. They're words, essentially. There are a number of characters that are strung together to make a string. So let's make another string and let's call it their name. And who shall I test my compatibility with? Let's go for Obama. <laughs> Although I should probably be writing Barack over there. Um, that's fine. OK, so let's now create a variable called love score and let's make it equal to 20 so we're not that friendly 20 20 percent compatibility and you can see that i've used a different keyword when i made the variable love score as to when i made the constant my name or their name so let's explain this a little bit when I create a constant with the keyword let, what I'm saying is forget about programming right now. Let's just think in terms of making boxes. I'm creating a wooden box that's called my name. And inside I've stuffed in a value that's Angela. And the, the keyword let means that my wooden box is nailed shut. It has no lid. Once I've nailed it down, I can't change what's inside. But when I make a variable such as this one, love score, that's equivalent to making a wooden box called love score and giving it a value inside of 20. So putting 20 inside. But the key difference is that variable boxes have a lid. So I can open up the lid and change what's inside at a moment's notice. So let's do that now. Let's change the love score to 80. And you can see that the computer is perfectly happy. But what if I try to do this to my name? If I decided to change my name to a any <laughs> to Amy, what happens? You'll see that Xcode will start to complain. And you can see that by this little red and white little circle here. So when you click on it, you can see what the error is. It says, cannot assign to value my name is a let constant. So it's saying that my name, you made it as a box that has is nailed shut. And now you want me to somehow change what's inside. So it's suggesting a fix for you. It's saying, why don't you instead just make a box in the beginning that had a lid on it and make my life easier. 
So I'm going to be translating from Xcode to you a lot of times. I hope you guys don't mind, but I find it's quite, um, it's a lot easier to understand or not. So we don't want to do that. We don't want to change my name because we made it as a constant and I'm going to keep my name Angela for a while yet. Okay, so now we've got a love score. We've got my name, we've got their name. Um, now I want to be able to print this into the console. So if you can't see the console as I have here, then you can go into this little button where there's a rectangle with a line underneath it and click it to bring up the, um, the, the console. So if I delete this, you'll see this message go away and this is what you should have. So here we're gonna write print and then we're going to open a bracket and inside we're gonna write something in between two quotation marks. So it's gonna read, Angela and Obama have a compatibility of, as you can see up there, it's 80%. Okay, so make sure that you've got one speech mark at the beginning, one speech mark at the end, and then close the bracket at the end. So now it prints the console and it says, Angela and Obama have a compatibility of 80%. But you notice that I typed all of that out. The computer didn't work for that. And the key similarity between all programmers, the thing that unites us is the fact that we are so very lazy. I don't want to have to type this out every single time I change the love score. I mean, if you know I wanted the love score to be say 40 and you know I, I would have to type this out or change that to a four. And that's dumb. So, you know, let's not do that. Instead, what we're going to do is we are going to delete the 40 and we're going to put in a placeholder. So you create placeholders by writing a backslash and two um, brackets, open and close brackets. Inside there, I'm going to put down the name of the variable, love score. Now make sure that you always spell the variable names exactly as they are declared. So you see here, I declared the first word love with a lowercase l and the second word score with an uppercase. This is called camel case in programming and it's pretty much common to all languages. So the first word should not be capitalized and every word thereafter should be. So if it was love score is, the next word and the next word and the next word should all be capitalized. Okay, great. So here I'm invoking love score inside the sentence and you can see that it's printing it out here. So what if I now change the love score to 10? You'll see that once it's finished running that it would update the sentence to 10. So let's go ahead and change that for Obama and Angela as well. Let's put in a placeholder and instead of writing Angela we're going to put down the name of my constant which is my name and then for Obama as well, highlight the word Obama and put in a placeholder and change it to their name. Okay, great. So now it should print out exactly the same. Angela and Obama have a compatibility of 10%, but it just allows me to change the love score and variables as I wish and it will update the sentence. So you note know that I've put all these love score changes above the line print. What if I put it below? So what if I now change the love score to 20? So does it update in here? No. So the reason is because computers are sequential. They always read your code from top to bottom. If you told it to print this line already and then you decide to change the love score afterwards, it won't update this love score in here. So you would have to put the print line so you can go uh, command x to cut and then command v to paste if you put it below this line however it will update okay so that's a bit about sequentiality we're going to delete all of this so now i am going to declare another constant let let's call it love modif modifier great love modifier and let's that make that equal to five so how are we gonna modify the love score? Say if we say love score equals, so reset the value of love score, equal to the value of 
love score at the moment, which as you can see over here is 20. And we're gonna modify it by adding the love modifier to it. So as you can see, to save time, a lot of times I don't like typing the whole and um, the whole variable name out. I tend to just write love, the beginning one or two or three letters, and then Xcode will suggest to you the names of variables. So here I wanna use love modifier, so I just press enter. And here it calculates, so 20 plus five equals 25. And you can use all of the basic, um, you can use all of the basic operands. So minus, and it becomes 15 or times, and it becomes 100 or divide, all of these basic modifiers. Great. So now we have our love score updated in the console log, and we know how to do basic maths. Awesome. So I hope you've had a chance to follow along and have a play around with Swift. Don't worry if it doesn't all make sense just yet, because in the coming episodes, we're going to be diving deeper into the Swift language, and I'm going to be taking you back to playgrounds every time we code and explain difficult coding concepts. So you'll have plenty of chances to practice it again. The really important thing is that this has to be a hands-on approach. So if you didn't get a chance to go through and make all of the code that I wrote before, pause this video now and launch Xcode. This is the fastest, the most proven way that we've managed to get students up and running. So just make sure that you do it along with me. All right. So in the next episode, we're going to talk about what exactly makes up an app. So we look forward to seeing you next time. And that's all from us at the London App Brewery. Make sure that you subscribe to our channel. And if you have any questions or comments or queries, leave them in the comment box below. All right, see you soon.